What's going on everyone? Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I want to talk to you about a very important feature of Adobe Premiere Pro called source patching. So if you're new to the world of video editing or if you're switching to Premiere Pro from another NLE, this concept might be new to you. But if you learn source patching, it's going to open up a lot of versatility and help you be more precise in your edits. Let's take a closer look. So before I jump into the specifics of source patching, let's just first take a look at how a video clip moves through Premiere Pro when you're doing an editing project. So over here I have the project panel. Now this is where all of my assets are stored. I have a few different things over here. I have some movie clips, I have a bars and tone clip, a project sequence, a music file. This is all of my source material. So as I'm editing, I'm going to be moving this source material over here into my timeline, and this is where I put my edit together. Now, there are a number of different ways to get that source material from here to here. One of the quickest and easiest methods is to simply drag and drop. I can grab this video clip here, drag and drop it over here, let's zoom out, and I can put it on different tracks. I have um, two audio and two video tracks you can see over here. So I can manually do this. I can bring my music clip in. Um, put it specifically where I want and I can even use keyboard shortcuts to perform different kinds of edits such as inserts, overwrites, overlays. For instance if I hold the command key that's gonna do an insert edit. Um, if I go back I'm gonna undo that. If I hold the alt key that'll do a replace edit. If I hold the shift key it's gonna snap it right to the beginning so there's a bunch of different options and that's if you're you're doing a down and dirty really quick edit I think that might be your best option another really helpful method is the drop zone now this is when you grab any of these assets and as you mouse over the program monitor it's gonna give you these overlays here and it's showing us what we can do editing wise we can do insert edits and perform any of these different edits where our time our current time indicator is on the timeline. Now if I want I could even replace a clip so if I have a clip selected in the timeline this will replace it. So this is really helpful if you're a beginner it's gonna help you kind of um, really visualize what you're doing. Now if you want to be even more precise you can use the source monitor. To open that up you can go to window and select source monitor or you can simply double click any of these assets here. So I'm gonna double click one of these clips so now this is gonna give us a bunch of extra options more versatility. Here I can add in and out points I can view the audio separate from the video, and on this particular example there's no audio, but if I click on this button here, you can see I, view, I can view the alpha channel, I can view the audio waveform. If we have a multi-camera multi source, you can see if I drag one of these um, audio music clips, here we have our waveform, um, and I can double click these or drag and drop. And we also have a bunch of ways to get the source material assets over here to our timeline. So just as I did with the project panel, I can simply grab right here and drag and drop, and that's gonna allow me to specify a particular track or wherever I want it to be. I can use those keyboard shortcuts again, just uh, exactly the same method as how I did from the project panel. Or I can use these buttons here. I have insert overwrite buttons with keyboard shortcuts. Or I can use those drop zones again, straight over here. It looks exactly the same as using the project panel. Okay, so this is where source patching comes into play. So in addition to all these options up here in the source monitor, I can go down here to the timeline panel and basically specify where I want that source material to end up on my timeline in regards to the tracks. So here I have my video and audio tracks. I have two video tracks here and two audio tracks. If we look over to the far left, we have this little blue button here. Now this is our source patching for inserts and overwrites. Now we have this for audio as well, but we're only going to see these when we have a source selected. So for instance, if I go over here and I clear out all of this source material and I deselect in the project panel, and now we can see that is no longer there and that's because we have no source material selected. Now you don't want to get this confused with track targeting. This is just to the right of these um, lock symbols here. This is an entirely different function which I'll talk about in another tutorial. In fact, I'll link to another tutorial that I created a few years back in my uh, Premium Beat blog article, so go check that out. Now if I go up here and I select these, watch what happens with these source patch buttons again. So this is just a video clip with no audio. So there, now I can see this source, uh, this, this button here. If I select just an audio, we can see the button here. 
and if I select bars and tone, we can see both. So now what exactly is this telling us? This is telling us that if we perform any of those edits, these are the tracks that it's gonna favor, unless I manually drag it and put it on a different track. If I have it deselected altogether, it won't bring it in at all. So for instance, I have the bars and tone here, let's drag these in. So I have the bars here, and then the tone for my audio. So let's say we wanna just use the audio. So the way, one way we can do this is just deselect the video. So this has three different modes. It has on, off, and then it has basically gap mode, which is called black or silent mode. So if I hold alt and hit this, now you can see this is gap mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn, let's just turn it off. So now if I grab this bars and tone and I drag it over, we only see the audio. And that's because once again, I don't have the video source patched. So we're not gonna see that. And once again, I can manually move this to another track if I want. But if I'm just performing, let me just go and move my playhead over here. Now if I'm just automatically doing an insert edit or an overwrite via my source monitor here, it's going to, you'll see right there, it automatically favored this track. So go ahead and undo that. Now let's see what we can do with this. So I'm gonna zoom out. Now if you're working on some crazy complex project, um, it has a lot of tracks. Let's say um, we can add 10 tracks to video, 10 tracks to audio, and we're gonna reposition these, reposition these. I'll zoom out here, and now I'm gonna delete these, and this will help you visualize exactly what's going on here. So now I have my bars and tones selected in the source monitor, and I'm gonna be using keyboard shortcut comma to do an edit from here and watch what happens. So first we only have audio track one, and now I'll zoom in and you can see it did not edit any of that video in because that's deselected. So let's go ahead and select that and do another edit there. Okay, now you can see it added the video. So let's go ahead and move this audio and go again. There you can see, I'm just hitting the comma key once again to do uh, an insert edit. If I move these around, so you get the idea. This is just telling it where specifically we want to go. We can turn that off. I can go back here, and if we do, let's put this here, this here. Now let's do that gap mode. Let's I'll put it both in gap mode and do an insert edit, and now it inserted that gap. So there you have it. That is source patching. Once again, not to be confused with track targeting. If you want to check out that tutorial, follow that link in the blog. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and for all your musical needs, head on over to premiumbeat.com.